Welcome to 21st Sports 2015 season preview for the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to go over the roster and we're also going to go over the schedule and make predictions for every single game in the regular season and into the playoffs. It's actually the Chiefs taking the West. But let's start off with the roster as we have Alex Smith back under center as the quarterback. And Alex Smith, actually, I think he's a pretty talented quarterback. He doesn't put up the biggest numbers, but he does a good job protecting the ball. Last year, he had 3,265 total passing yards. He had 18 touchdowns, but just six interceptions. So he threw three times as many touchdowns as he did picks. So that's always a good thing. And then, But this year, he's got some more weapons. Of course, last year, he had Jamal Charles. And Jamal Charles had over 1,000 yards rushing, 1,033 yards rushing, along with nine touchdowns on the ground. He also had five touchdowns receiving and 291 receiving yards off of 40 receptions for Jamal Charles. So Jamal Charles had a big season. I think he's going to put up even bigger numbers this year as he's going to have help from Jeremy Macklin, who's a new acquisition. He's their biggest acquisition in the offseason as he's back with Andy Reid, and he should put up some big numbers and help Alex Smith to boost his numbers as well. And on the other side of receiver, you got Albert Wilson. He was a rookie last year, so he's going to have to step it up here in his second year. They also had Jason Avant as well. And at tight end, Travis Kelsey, I think he's going to have a big year. He's, you know, done some pretty good things when he's healthy in the past. And if he can stay healthy, I think he'll have a good season. Of course, I also have Anthony Sherman there, fullback. And then also Nile Davis should get some carries as well. So they've got a lot of talent. And then DeAnthony Thomas, he can either, you know, line up at receiver. He can also line up in the backfield. So they got plenty of weapons. And, you know, Andy Reid can be very creative with the offense. And they should be getting them, you know, some... Uh, Definitely plenty of touches to go around, and people should be putting up big numbers. And last year, Kelsey, he was the leading receiver for the Chiefs with 862 receiving yards and five touchdowns off 67 receptions. But this year, I believe Macklin will get over 1,000 yards and be the leading receiver, so they'll actually have a threat at that receiver position. So they should put up some pretty good numbers, and that should actually open things up for Jamal Charles as well as with them being able to pass the ball teams won't be able to stack up as much against Jamal. They'll actually open him up to have an even bigger year than last year as he should definitely have more yards on the ground. Of course, splitting some time with Nile Davis. Nile Davis also has potential to put up some pretty big numbers as well. You know, he had 463 rushing yards last year for Nile Davis. He also is a threat out of the backfield too. He had 147 receiving yards. He, had, he caught a touchdown and he ran you know, for six for Davis there. But let's look at the defense and up front. They're pretty solid with Mike DeVito on the end, Allen Bailey on the other end, and then in the middle, Jay Howard up front there at nose tackle. Then their linebacking core is the real strength of their defense. Like I said, they're strong up front, but then the outside linebackers are very talented. Two of the best outside linebackers in Justin Houston and Tom Bahali as they really get after the quarterback and they can put up some pretty big numbers when it comes to sacks. As we saw last year, Justin Houston had 22 sacks last year. So, And Tom Bahali, he didn't actually, you know, he had some issues with injuries last year, and he had six sacks. So expect him to bounce back. If he can stay healthy, he should have some big numbers. And then up the middle and the inside, you got Josh Moga and Derek Johnson, who are two very talented linebackers as well. This is one of the best linebacking cores in all of football. And they're going to have to play that way because they've got some inexperience on the corners with Philip Gaines in his second year and Marcus Peters as a rookie. So you got two young corners, and that's kind of the weak spot. They're going to need their safeties, and Ron Parker, the strong safety, and Hussein Abdullah, the free safeties, are going to have to really, you know, watch out for them and make sure to cover, you know, and make sure that they're in the right position. As like I said, these guys are young, but that doesn't mean that they can't have success, especially Andy Reid is one of the top coaches, and he is a very good defensive coach. And with how solid they are up front and how good they are at the linebacking core, they're going to get after the quarterback. They're going to force the quarterback to have to get rid of the ball quick and make quick decisions, and that means that the corners won't have to necessarily be playing up to the level as some corners play 
you know, to have success because they got so much support up front in their front seven, you know, the front three and then the four in the linebacking core will take some pressure off of those young guys in the secondary on the corners to make it to where, you know, with the, you know, the help they're going to be getting from the safeties and the little time that quarterbacks are going to have against the Chiefs, they won't have to play like so stellar from that corner position. If they just play, you know, good or average, they'll be fine. So I think the defense is pretty solid for KC. Then we go to their special teams. They've got really good special teams. Cairo Santos is their kicker. I think he's a good kicker. Dustin Colquitt, he's a good punter. And their real strength is their return team with DeAnthony Thomas returning punts and Niall Davis returning kicks. These guys are threats to take it to the house every time the ball is in their hands on special teams. So you can see the Chiefs scoring from a lot of different ways, you know, on offense, on defense, and on special teams. In the past, they've needed their defense and special teams to put up points. This year, they shouldn't have as much trouble getting in the end zone now with Jeremy Macklin there. Now Alex Smith actually has, you know, a number one receiver, as he didn't have, you know, uh, before. Before it was just, you know, Dwayne Bowe. No knock on him, but he's no Jeremy Macklin. But anyway, let's go over the season schedule. So starting off week one, they've got a tough game right off the rip as they're going to have to go to Houston, Texas, September 13th in week one, Sunday at 1 o'clock kickoff. They're going to be facing the Texans. So things are going to start off rough for KC, and I believe that the Texans win this game. Like I said, I think KC takes this division. So it's going to be a rough start. You might, at the beginning of this, you might want to just turn it on and be like, oh, what the heck, he's picking all these losses. But I have most of their losses coming here early in the season. Is it's really rough in their schedule at first, but I think they'll write the track and get things going. So anyway, week two, September 17th, they're going to be on Thursday night. So it's a short week. They're going against the Broncos. They're going to be hosting the Broncos. That's an 825 kickoff time there in week two. And I believe that the Chiefs will beat the Broncos, get a little revenge. This is a game that they do have to win these games in the AFC West to take the division. And the Broncos, you know, they've given them trouble. The Chiefs have been right there on the verge of taking this division. But Peyton Manning's put up some big seasons, but not this time. This time they get the best of Peyton. They're going to be in his face. They're going to be having a sack party. And Peyton's going to be on his back. And the Chiefs are going to beat the Broncos in Week 2 in Arrowhead. And Arrowhead's one of the toughest places for a team to win as it is. But this schedule starts off rough for the Chiefs as they have three out of their first game, four games on the road. And so after that win that evens things up at 500 starting off in week three, September 28th, they're going to be on Monday Night Football in Lambeau Field facing the Packers. That's an 8.30 kickoff. It is a tough game. Like I said, they start off the season really tough. Three out of four games on the road against three teams that could make the playoffs. You know, teams that I have making the playoffs in my predictions. But against the Packers in Lambeau Field, it's going to be a really good game, and it's going to be one to watch for sure. I can't miss. Definitely going to be exciting. But I think the Packers take it. Like I said, it's in Lambeau Field, and that's going to make the difference. Then in Week 4, October 4th, Sunday game, 1 o'clock, their third road game, and it's just Week 4. And so that one's going to be in Cincinnati against the Bengals, and I believe they're going to lose that one too. Cincinnati is just as tough as Green Bay at home. Just like the Chiefs are tough at home, these are the teams that, like, out of all the teams, the toughest teams to be at their home is the Packers, the Bengals, and the Chiefs. Historically, the Broncos, too, but I think that's not going to happen this year. But anyway, so at this point, they're 1-3, and three, and it looks rough, and people are going to be like, oh, the season's over, but not so fast. This is where they bounce back, and they're going to go on a winning streak. They're going to win the next four games going into the bye, starting off in Week 5, October 11th on Sunday at 1. They're going to be hosting the Bears, and they should have no problem beating the Bears in Arrowhead. They should just run away with this game. So then in Week 6, October 18th, they're going to be going to Minnesota, second week in a row facing an NFC North opponent, but this time on the road in Minnesota, and I think they can beat the Vikings. The, really, the only question here is just you know, if they're going to be able to put up enough points, and I think they will put up enough points. I think the Chiefs are going to have a much better offense this year. So then week 7, October 25th, another Sunday game, 1 o'clock. This one back in Kansas City. 
as he'll be facing the Steelers. And this is a rivalry that goes back all the way to the days, you know, of the AFL. And I think they will beat the Steelers. You know, it's, uh, it'll be a tough game, but I believe the Chiefs are really going to be one of the better teams in the league. And so right here, after losing, you know, those two games in a row and three out of the first four, they're going to bounce back, winning these three games in a row. Now they're going to be back over 500. And then in week eight, November 1st, they're going to be going overseas to face the Lions. And this is a 9.30 a.m. kickoff time over in London. And against the Lions in this one, they're technically the home team, but it kind of sucks for the Chiefs that they get robbed of a home game. I mean, it works out for the Lions, but for the Chiefs, that's you know it kind of takes away a home game from them and also from their fans. And uh, with how good the Chiefs are at Arrowhead, that really sucks that it counts as a home game for them. But that's just the way it is. So there's not really anything you can do about that. And I actually think, though, that they'll be able to beat the Lions, even though I think the Lions are going to be one of the better teams. But it shows you how much I actually believe in Kansas City that I would pick them to beat Detroit. And so I just think their defense is just so tough, especially, like I said, up, up front. They're going to shut down anybody's run. They're going to get after the quarterback they'll be able to put up the points but that's going to be a really good game right there and if you're up early enough to watch it you definitely should so then week nine is the bye week for kansas city and then heading out of the bye week they face the broncos for the second time this time in week 10 and this time in denver that's november 15th it's a 425 kickoff and against the broncos they got beat twice by them last year, but this time they are going to beat the Broncos twice. They're going to sweep the season series. Like I said, they're going to get the best of Peyton Manning first when they get them in KC in Week 2 and then here in Week 10 in Denver. So they're going to win this game. And then coming off this win, Week 11, November 22nd, they're going to be on Sunday night football against the Chargers. And the Chargers are going to be a team they're going to have to beat to win the division because the Chargers will be threatening for that. As it will be right there in the mix. I think it's going to be between the, the Chiefs, the Chargers, and the Raiders. I actually think, you know, like I said the Chiefs are going to take it. but And I think they're going to lose this game, though, against San Diego. It's in San Diego. So I think this is a loss for them. But then they bounce back in Week 12, November 29th, 1 o'clock on Sunday. And that one will be at home against the Bills. The Bills have you know trouble at quarterback. It's not really solid. We don't really know what's McCoy going to be able to do. So I don't really trust the Bills' offense. And I think the Chiefs should shut them down no problem. I think they win this game. So in December 13th, or Week 13, December 6th, 4 o'clock kickoff, they're going to be going to Oakland to face the Raiders. I think the Raiders win this game. This is a classic rivalry right here, and it's a division rivalry game. And these are games they need to win, but I think that they end up, you know, splitting with the Raiders, and this one's in Oakland, and so I think the Raiders take this one. Then in Week 14, another division rivalry game. This one, the second one against San Diego. That's December 13th, 1 o'clock kickoff. It's in KC, and I think this time around, they beat the Chargers, splitting the season series against San Diego. It's in Week 15, December 20th, 1 o'clock game, another Sunday game. This one in Baltimore, their final road game of the season. And I believe they will beat the Ravens. I think the Ravens are overrated this year and going to have a, a rough year. And I think KC is going to run all over them. And they have no problem beating Baltimore there in Week 15. So then they finish off with two home games first in Week 16 against the Cleveland Browns on December 27th. That's a Sunday at 1 o'clock kickoff. And they should have no problem with the Browns. This is kind of an easy game right here that's going to be the game before the final game of the season so they're going to kind of need a game like this because the next game is going to be for all the marbles in the west in my opinion that's week 17 january 3rd one o'clock on sunday kickoff they're going to be hosting the raiders and a lot of people don't expect the raiders to be that good but i think they will and this game right here like i said it's going to come down to this one for who wins the division will it be the chiefs or the raiders already the raiders have winning in oakland but here in kansas city I have the Chiefs winning this game, so they'll split the season series with the Raiders. And with that, with that win, that puts them at 11 and 5. And with that record, they will win the AFC West. So I have them winning the AFC West. I actually have them in a tie with Oakland, but winning the tiebreaker. 
and by winning that last game and having more points, they'll end up winning the tiebreaker. So they'll win the division, and they'll have a home game in the wild card. So I believe that they'll make it into the playoffs. They'll be, you know, a wild card team technically, even though they'll have won their division. But they'll end up in the wild card as the number four seed to face the number fifth seed, Miami. And in this game, I have the Dolphins actually beating Kansas City. The Dolphins are going to be a really tough team. And Kansas City will have a good season. They'll win the division. And that's something to build upon, having that division title finally knocking off the Broncos. But then in the playoffs, even though it's going to be at home, and maybe they end up winning it because it is at home, but officially I picked the Dolphins to win this one. I think the Dolphins just are going to have too much firepower, and they've got just as good of a defense, and the edge kind of comes down to the Dolphins' corners, especially Brent Grimes. But, you know, it's a question mark to see what's going to happen with Kansas City's corners. How are they going to perform? They said they're really solid up front, and that will – you know, be able to compensate for the youth on the corners during the season. But then when it comes to playoff time, that's where I think they kind of get exposed a little bit on the outside in the corners, especially with Ryan Tannehill and with the weapons he has at his disposal. That's where I see, you know, the Chiefs season come into an end. So that's how I have things, you know, projected throughout the season and into the playoffs for the Kansas City Chiefs. Like I said, I think they're going to have a really good year. And I think they'll be able to build upon this success moving forward for next year as well, where they might win a playoff game the year after. But right here, you know, winning the division title, that's a pretty good year. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments section below. What do you think about their roster? What do you think about the regular season? What do you think about our predictions? And what do you think about their chances of winning the division title and making it into the playoffs? And how far do you see them going in the playoffs? Definitely interested to read your comments whether you agree or disagree thank you very much for listening it is greatly appreciated i hope you're having a good day and have a great weekend and enjoy all the sports